what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Back in 2007, nearly six years after the release of Windows XP, Microsoft finally released a brand new operating system, Windows Vista. Microsoft had promised that Windows Vista would be much more reliable, more efficient, more usable and more elegant than its predecessors. However, this did not seem to be the case for many users back in 2007 and 2008. Windows Vista had many new features that came with it including the Start Search feature which is also present inside Windows Explorer folders. And not only that, Windows Vista included a much more advanced graphical user interface than its predecessors, capable of transparency effects and smoother animations. However, this still wasn't enough to make Vista successful. And this begs the question, for such a revolutionary operating system, with so many new features, how is it so much worse than Windows XP and what came before it? How is Windows Vista so bad and how is it so hated? In order to answer this question fully, we need to take a look at Windows Vista's development cycle. Back in 2001, which was the year Windows XP released, Microsoft started working on a new Windows operating system named Longhorn. When Microsoft develops new versions of Windows, Microsoft gives each Windows version a code name. Windows XP was Windows Whistler, Windows Vista is Windows Longhorn, and there was another code name for a future version of Windows which was higher up than Windows Longhorn, and that was Windows Black Home, which eventually became Windows 7. Microsoft named Windows 7 and Windows XP's code names after two mountains in British Columbia, these being Black Home and Whistler. These were meant to be two major releases of the Windows operating system. However, Windows Longhorn was meant to be an incremental release. Windows Longhorn was named after Longhorn Saloon and Grill in Whistler, BC, which is a bar which is located in between the two mountains. As you can see, early builds of Windows Longhorn really are just Windows XP with a fresh coat of paint, although later builds of Longhorn would experiment with different types of themes such as Slate, Jade and Plex. Throughout Longhorn's development, Microsoft is introducing more and more features such as the new security architecture, Palladium, and Windows Future Storage, which was also WinFS. Later on, Microsoft decided to scrap these features, which many users were not happy about. Later on in Longhorn's development cycle, Microsoft kept adding more and more features, and Windows Longhorn became a victim of feature creep. Feature creep is where unnecessary features and bloatware are added to an operating system or program, and due to the fact that Windows Longhorn had so many features added to it which were unnecessary, it became a bloated and buggy mess which led to Microsoft having to reset the entire project in 2004. After the reset, Windows Longhorn looked exactly like Windows XP. As you can see, they photoshopped a picture of a Longhorn, as you can see here. Yep, they actually did that. They actually just photoshopped a picture of a Longhorn in the Windows XP Bliss. <laughs> And besides scrapping all the assets and features that were included in the pre-reset version of Windows Longhorn, they also changed the name of the operating system from Longhorn to Vista. As beta releases of Windows Vista were released to the public, they received more positive feedback than the Windows Longhorn releases as they were slightly less buggy but were still indeed very buggy, but bear in mind these were beta releases. In 2005, Windows Longhorn build 5048 introduced the Aero theme. However, to Microsoft's surprise, this theme was not well received. 
by certain people. A Windows enthusiast by the name of Paul Thurrett says that Windows Longhorn build 5048 is hugely disappointing from an end user perspective because it shows how far behind Microsoft is in delivering the next client version of Windows. Also, expectations were high that Microsoft would hit a home run with this build because it was the first public Longhorn release in a whole year. Yep, that's right, this is the first Windows Longhorn build released since an entire year, which means the expectations were going to be very high, and Microsoft had not introduced many new features in this build, which led to much disappointment. However, at this point in the development of Longhorn, Microsoft had a clearer vision of what they wanted their next operating system to be, and they were confident that they were able to release this operating system to manufacturing on November 2006. Microsoft were releasing more and more beta releases as an opportunity to patch out more bugs in the operating system to make things more professional and more refined. For Microsoft, things were actually starting to look pretty good at this stage. So Microsoft had set a release date for Windows Vista, which was January 30th, 2007. A whole four years after the date it was supposed to be launched. Microsoft had finally released Windows Vista on the day it was meant to be released. However, it still failed. Despite Windows Vista possessing more features and looking far better than its predecessors, people still hated it, and it quickly developed a negative reputation. The hate for Windows Vista got so bad to the point that Apple started releasing Mac vs PC ads to poke holes at the operating system and mock it to make people switch over from PC to Mac. These ads had proven to be very successful for Apple, as Windows Vista was a very popular topic to hate back in the day, and Apple saw this as an opportunity to increase sales for their Macs. Another reason as to why Windows Vista was so hated was its crazy system requirements of the time, and they were far, far higher than that of Windows XP. However, on the contrary to what most people believe, Windows XP actually had a terrible launch and suffered the same problems as Vista did with its exceedingly high system requirements. PCs that did not meet the system requirements ran very poorly or did not run properly at all. After a whole year of Windows Vista being the latest Windows operating system, Microsoft knew that Windows Vista was in trouble. Microsoft had to come up with a strategy to reverse Windows Vista's terrible reputation. Microsoft decided to create an advertisement campaign, which is known as the Mojave Experiment. Microsoft would invite people who have never used Windows Vista before to try out the new Windows Mojave operating system. But before this, they would get the users to rate Windows Vista out of 10 on a notepad. Before trying out Windows Mojave, people gave Windows Vista very low scores. However, they were to find out that Windows Mojave was just Windows Vista under a different name. So it's just an informal discussion. I'll be asking some questions and you just answer them as honestly as, as you can. So why haven't you upgraded to Vista yet? Just the bad things I've heard about it. I just heard negative things. I never tried it myself. I, I wouldn't touch the thing. It's horrible. We have so many problems. <laughs> it crashes. <laughs> I've heard nothing but bad things about Vista, really. I'd like you to rate your overall favorability of Windows Vista. Okay. The paper. Okay, so you gave Windows Vista a zero. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit about Windows Mojave. Okay. Which is actually uh, the newest version of Windows. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see how it works. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's sick. Yes. That's great. So, oh, that's great. I love gadgets. Man, it's awesome. Oh, what do you think of this new upgrade? Really cool. It's very impressive. The speed is incredible, right? I need an upgrade, and that looks like everything that I would need. That's 10, definitely. All right. Well, I have to confess to you this is Vista. Really? What? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> this is Windows Vista. Son of a gun. Man, you got me. I had no idea that you could do all this with Windows Vista. It represents a lot of things that uh, you could only dream of um, a few years back. Actually, it's totally different than what I had heard it would be like. I'm impressed. I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, it just seems so easy. I'm getting it. <laughs> I would say it's an awesome program, but you have to see for yourself. As you can see by the social experiment that was conducted by Microsoft, 
Most of the users gave Windows Mojave a very positive score and were very surprised that it was Windows Vista. However, a lot of people were quick to point out that Microsoft had cherry-picked the best responses to the social experiment and that it was inherently flawed. However, this social experiment did prove its point and that was that most people who hated Windows Vista had never even given the operating system a chance and that if they were to give it a chance, they might actually like it. And another misconception about Windows Vista is that it would constantly use your HDD and CPU a lot. However, this is not the case. Windows Vista came with a new memory management model, which would use system resources to speed up background processes. However, Microsoft could have done a better job at representing this. So now I'm going to perform my own kind of experiment. I'm going to take a Windows XP era gaming rig and compare it to an Office PC from 2008 which is from the Windows Vista era. This thing is a Mesh Matrix Titan PC, and it is absolutely ginormous. And it absolutely dwarfs my Dell Octoplex 760 small form factor PC. So now let's get on with the experiment. So what we're going to do now is install Windows Vista on this absolute beast of a computer. And yes, that is sped up, I'm not kidding. That Windows is loading files is sped up. And if you're wondering why you saw a Windows 7 boot screen there, that's because this is a Windows Vista extended kernel ISO. Anyways, let's set up the installation of Windows Vista on this computer, as I was interested to see how Windows Vista would run since this computer came out in 2006, nearly a whole year before Windows Vista was released to manufacturing. For those of you who are wondering what the specs of this PC are, the CPU is an AMD Athlon X2 CPU, a GeForce GTX 550 Ti and 3GB of DDR2 RAM. Wow, this has taken a while. This PC is really bad. Or maybe it's that this PC just isn't quite good enough for this stuff, but we're going to install it on this PC anyway. In hindsight, Windows Vista actually performed pretty well on this PC. However, more on that later. Now this is why people hated Vista back in the day. On PCs like this, it just ran so unbearably slow. Which thankfully wasn't the case, once everything was installed and set up. Oh, finally, that took forever. And yes, that single stage of the setup took a whopping 5 minutes to complete. And I'm not even kidding, it took a whole 5 minutes. Oh, never mind, that actually didn't take that long. Well, thankfully, that part didn't. There we go. Now I bet this will take forever. Well, it's finally done. And from then onwards, the, the setup didn't actually take that long to complete. It was a lot better than I anticipated. Hmm, it's not actually that bad. It's actually running pretty well. And to my surprise, Windows Vista performed fairly well after all this. I mean, this is a very high spec system from back in the day, which would have costed thousands, or at least 1000. Unfortunately, unlike the Dell Optiplex, this does not have a built in speaker, and I don't have any speakers to hook up to this PC at the moment. As you can tell, I was pretty impressed by the performance of this computer, especially how well it ran Windows Vista. Now it's time to boot up the computer. I mean, just listen to the sound of this thing start up, it just sounds ridiculous, like PCs of this time were just so loud. Anyways, I digress, I thought I'd do a little startup test, just to see how fast it would boot Windows Vista, and it was surprisingly pretty good, despite the hard drives inside this computer dating all the way back to 2009 and so on. One thing I do dislike about this computer is how long it takes to get past the BIOS, I mean, it just takes forever. Like, yeah look, it's just still going, it's, it's ridiculous. That's one thing I really dislike about this PC, it goes through all these checks, and these checks take around 20 seconds, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Now it finally loads into the Windows Vista operating system. It's about time, I mean, it took absolutely forever. 
Yep, there's me waving to the camera because I thought I was pretty funny, even though I'm not. But anyway, Windows Vista actually boots up pretty well on this computer. I mean, it's not the fastest, but it's not too shabby either. I mean, just look at this. It's pretty average, really. I mean, it logs onto the desktop pretty slowly, but besides that, it's actually not too bad. Especially for the really old hard drives inside this computer. If I had put a newer hard drive inside this computer, or even an SSD, I think it would have improved the speeds by quite a fair bit, to be fair. When actually using the system, it's all it's really snappy. Not too bad, actually. That was actually quite good. Slower than XP, but not terrible. I mean, it's, it's pretty usable. Windows open instantly. And I thought that just for the fun of it, I'd use Windows Experience Index to benchmark this PC because I couldn't be asked to download Wi-Fi drivers for this thing. Let's just see what it gets on here. Well, we've got a 4.7 on the Windows Experience Index. Not too shabby. Yeah, Vista runs pretty good on here. The lowest being the RAM. Got 4.9 on the processor, 4.7 on the RAM, 5.9 on graphics, 5.9 on gaming graphics, and 5.4 on the hard disk. The reason why it got 5.9 on the graphics is because I put a GeForce GTX 550 Ti on this thing, because this motherboard does not have integrated graphics. Let's see how long Vista takes to shut down. I don't know about you, but I think that was pretty quick. And now it's time for me to unplug all the cables from the mesh matrix and transfer everything to the Dell Optiplex 760. And I gotta say, it was a nightmare hooking up the VGA cable to the 760's GTX 745 because in order to mount the GPU inside the case, I had to remove the bracket and the VGA cable had to hang around at the bottom it was just all just loose and everything, and it was just a nightmare plugging everything in. As you, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but yeah, I eventually managed to get it. But anyways, I think we ought to boot up the system now. For some weird reason, after plugging in Dell PCs for the first time in a while, the fan just seems to go crazy. I don't know why Dell PCs do that, but they just do. That's just the nature of Dell PCs, I guess. And if you're wondering why it has a a, ba a static image, that's because I enabled the no GUI boot on the Windows Vista install on this thing. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Well, that was a lot quicker than the other PC, mainly because of this PC is much newer. Well, actually, no, it's actually two years younger, and that's how I'll sort that out. There we go. Computers, let's just say that they evolved very quickly in that time frame. Now, let me just get a Windows Experience Index score on this PC. It's currently at 5.4, but I think we should update it anyway, just to see what we get. Of course, it got 5.4 again, and the lowest it got was on memory, whilst everything else is, hold on. It got 5.9 on everything except RAM. Yeah, let's just say that hardware significantly improved within that time. So yeah, that's my point. The whole point of me comparing them to computers is to show how much hardware improved since Windows Vista released and how much better Windows Vista ran on hardware that was newer. So yeah. After going through all that, I think it's time I reach a justification, or a conclusion, however, whatever you want to call it. Was Windows Vista that bad? Yes and no. In the beginning, Windows Vista suffered a lot of growing pains in its early days. However, as time went on, 
Windows Vista became a very usable, very beautiful and very likeable operating system by those who actually gave it a chance later in its life. However, most people didn't and mob mentality is what ultimately defeated Windows Vista in the end. So yeah, this is just a little video of me going over Windows Vista's life. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in another video. See you guys later, and goodbye.